Yep. All right, so we're going to do the left side of the cabin here. From the left side, we'll start up here from the front. This right here is for you to have the computer area. Make sure when you shut it, you hold it, it'll slam down if you don't. Just like a normal vehicle, you got everything that works up here when the engine is on. When the engine is off, the only thing that'll work back here is the radio. You turn it on again, you just hit that little blue button, it'll turn on the radio. Speakers are up here in the front, also speakers in the master bedroom where the speakers on. Turn it off. Now when you turn on the vehicle, that won't turn on either, because this does use the battery of the house. Okay? Now up here you do have these two plugs right here, an outlet. Those outlets will not work unless your generator is on or unless you're connected to permanent power. All right. That's about it on this left side here. To move the, the chair, the chair goes just like any other chair. You can fold it back and fold it forward. That's how the chair works. All right. This right here is not designed to sit in while you're traveling down the road because it is not attached. It does fold out. Up here, you got all your electronic components for the, the TV. So to play the TV, Turn on the DVD player, which is right here. You'll then turn on the power, and you'll hit DVD, 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 and that'll put all of the same things that the TV is running off of will be on the same exact uh, channel. So they'll play all the DVD that's on. And okay, you got all your controllers and everything to power all that. Now, lastly, it's going to be this bed here. You're going to want to take the bed down. Well, I'll do the bed later. Do that in another video. Over onto this left side as well, you do have your fire extinguisher right here. There's also another one on the back. Coming down these steps, we have the step button down. It means that when this door is opened and the generator is on, the steps are going to stay out even when you shut the door. If I push this step button up, when I shut this door, the steps are going to come and retract. So as you notice, when I'm going to open it, they will now go back out. Since we're stopped, we're going to keep that button down, meaning that the steps are going to stay down even when I shut it. The awning is the next button. That's awning in, awning out. It's very simple. When I want the awning to go out, I hit the out button and it'll slowly roll itself out. When I want it to be in, I hit the in button, it'll roll itself in. If you continue with the out button on the way out, it'll roll itself back in backwards. Once it gets to the end, it just keeps rolling. So once it gets to the end, you'll notice all the fringe will come down. That means it's at the end. Keep in mind, it will not move in if the keys are inside the ignition. That's a safe feature. Next one is the disconnect, use, and storage button. Right here is the most important button, meaning that you never want to push the storage button when you're driving down the road or when you're stopped at your, at your campsite. It will kill all the battery in the inside. You want to keep it in the use spot. And you only want to put it to store when you bring the RV back to us. That's the only time you're going to put it in the store. Alright, next is going to be the sink area. These get stored behind the gear when you're not using it. Just like a normal sink, you turn on the faucet just like normal. Over here you got the range. The range, these get stored back here when you're using the range and the cook stop, the cooktop. You want to remove both of these when you're going to turn on the oven or the range top. To start the oven, you'll just turn it over to one of the burners and you'll hit the strike button and it'll strike it right up. In the oven, you'll have to turn it over to the pilot, hold it in, and then you'll have to grab your lighter and you'll light that pilot underneath to get it to light. Once that thermocouple's hot, and you have it held down on pilot for a little bit, then you can turn it over to the temperature that you want. Keep in mind that they aren't very accurate on how hot it's going to be. So if you're going to cook a pizza, just keep watching it or cookies or something like that. Just keep watching it, making sure you don't overcook it. The refrigerator right now is in the off position. But if we were going to go somewhere, we'd hit it over to the auto position. Since the generator's on, it's going to be green. If the generator was off, it would be yellow, and that which means it's doing off of the gas of the unit here. But since the generator is on, it's in the auto position, it's going to use the electricity. If I were to turn the generator off, it'll automatically go right over to the gas. We always keep it usually in the five spot, unless we're going to take it for about a week. Then we'll probably put it right into the mid minimum setting there, or medium setting there. It's designed to keep things cold, 
it's not really designed to keep things get things cold. So if you're going to put hot items in there, it's going to take two, three, four hours, or maybe even eight hours to get it really cold. Keep that in mind. I'll turn it off for right now. And that's pretty much it on this side of the vehicle, except for the microwave. The microwave here, when you're going to use the microwave, if you're on permanent power, you can use it with all the AC units on whenever you like. If you're going to use it when the generator's on and only the generator's on, then you can't. You can only use the microwave with one air conditioner on at a time. There are three air conditioners on this unit, but you can only use one one air conditioner when you're going to use this. It just pulls too much power from that generator. All right, and it's just like a normal microwave. Use microwave will save items inside of it. And if you want to pop popcorn while you're driving down the road, that's totally fine. Just make sure you turn off one of the air conditioners in this cabin area so that it will not trip the breaker. If you do trip the breaker, it's the generator breaker. It's on the outside of the vehicle. So it would be very annoying. You got to stop the vehicle, get outside, put that breaker back on, and usually start the generator back up. It's a lot of headaches. You just don't do it. That should be it. Thanks.